how's it going? In my last video, I, um, I spoke about my diet in terms of how I lost 26 pounds in three months. Um, and in this video, I wanna sort of go across five, five key points really that sort of kept me motivated and uh, enabled me to sort of achieve those weight loss goals. So point number one that I really wanna discuss and it's the obvious point is you have to eat in a calorie deficit. So you have to eat less calories than you burn. And obviously everybody generally knows that, but I wanna sort of talk more about where those calories come from, particularly if you're wanting to maintain any sort of muscle mass that you may have. Um, so I'm talking more in terms of levels of protein that you're taking in because one of the mistakes that I made in the past, about three or four years ago, I was I was bulking. I bulked for about a year. I was working out at the same time. Um, I put on, you know, some size, um, but I put on mostly fat. Put on a lot of fat in the process. And then when I actually came to dieting to lose that fat, I didn't really know what I was doing. So not only was I eating two less calories for what my metabolism was, I wasn't eating enough protein. And what basically happened was all that muscle that I put on in this bulk, I, I basically lost. Um, I lost majority of it, I got really skinny. Um, and I just became really demotivated. Uh, it completely threw me off my diet. I, I, I just stopped working out. And I sort of fell into a bad place really um, when it came to food and, and just, just health in general. So the rule of thumb is that you're supposed to eat one gram of protein per pound of body fat that you weigh. So what worked for me is once I'd calculated my daily calories and I knew how many calories that I was supposed to be eating in order to sort of lose weight, from that, from that calorie total, 40% of that came from protein, 40% of that came from carbohydrates and 20% of that came from fats. And that's what worked for me. This meant that I was hitting the one gram um, a pound of body fat minimum. Uh, I was actually eating slightly more than that. Um, but it was also giving me enough carbohydrates, I felt to give me enough energy for my workouts. Um, and I was able to structure a, a diet around that. So not only did it enable me to keep the muscle mass that I had, but it also, I also put on a little bit of muscle as well whilst I was in a calorie deficit. As long as you're getting that one gram per pound of body fat protein, um, you, you, you're gonna be sort of keeping any sort of muscle mass that you've got, um, providing you're not eating two less calories, which is what I've done in the past. It's probably something I'll talk about in a future video. So the point number two that I wanna sort of um, share really is, is making sure that you're sort of tracking everything um, in terms of what you're eating. Um, if you're not using MyFitnessPal um, app for tracking, uh, I do recommend that you start doing that. So when I'm talking about tracking everything, uh, I literally weigh every item that I'm eating. Um, I scan the packaging or I search for that product on my fitness pal to make sure I'm, you know, what I'm putting in is as accurate as possible. But the main thing for me, um, this is when I really started to see more results, was when I started tracking all these sort of calories that you don't really think about, um, sauces, drinks, uh, oils that you might be cooking with. Um, for example, if you're, if you're someone who drinks coffee, and you say you have five coffees a day, and with semi-skim milk, that's like 90 calories. And that might not sound like a lot, but you know, if you're having mayonnaise with your food, if you're having different sauces, if you're cooking with olive oil that you're not tracking, these little bits all add up. And it can be the difference between losing weight, maintaining weight, and, and in some cases, even putting weight on. It depends on how many of these additional calories that we're having um, without tracking. So point number three that I wanna sort of discuss is um, I've got into the habit now of sort of planning my fitness pal meals ahead of time. And I don't mean sort of prepping food, um, although that is something that you should do if you've got the time to do so. What I'm talking about is more the actual food that I'm gonna be consuming in a day, rather than sort of just putting these meals in on the fly as I go, um, I take some time in the morning, um, or you could do it in the evening, depending on what works for you. And I sort of plan out what I'm gonna eat for the day and I enter it into the MyFitnessPal app. And then I do this until I've hit my daily calories. And then I look at the nutrition table and I see if I'm hitting my macros for the day. And as long as you're hitting your daily calories, 
You then just really just need to tweak the meals. Um, I just, once, once I've taken a look, if, if for example, I'm down 20 grams on protein for the day and I'm up 20 grams on carbs for the day, I'll literally go back through my meals that I've sort of planned out and I'll just tweak the measurements to, to, to sort of get up to those levels. So say for argument's sake, I was having a chicken breast with new potatoes and vegetables. I would, if I was up on my protein and down on my carbs, I would just lower the grams of the chicken that I'm, I'm consuming and just up the level of uh, veg and potatoes that I'm having. And then I'll take a look at the nutrition table again um, and, and you know, if I need to do any more tweaking, I will do. But since I've got into the habit of actually planning my meals ahead of time in my fitness pal, I feel so much more organized. Um, there's nothing worse than sort of getting to the end of the day, knowing that you've got sort of 600, 700 calories left to eat and sort of rummaging around in the cupboards or the fridge to try and find foods that are gonna fit your macros and enable you to hit your calories. And it's just, it just causes, you know, a bit of stress really. So point number four that I wanna raise would be, don't focus so much on the scale. Um, when it comes to checking your weight progress. That was something that I was doing early on. Um, the first couple of weeks, I was sort of focusing more on what that scale was saying each day. Um, and I noticed that my weight was just fluctuating up and down, you know, depending on the last time I had a meal or depending on whether I was holding any water weight or if I was bloated. I mean, I do suffer from bloating, so sometimes I might have been bloated on a morning. It kind of felt me, it started to make me feel a little bit down, like I wasn't making any progress. Um, until I started to sort of put that to the back of my mind and m focus more on how I was looking, the physical appearance, um, how my photos was looking. I was taking photos every sort of two weeks, I would say. And there's nothing more inspirational than sort of having a look at the photos that you've taken previously and sort of comparing it to your, your, your current photo. And, and it was only when I started to do that when I really started to notice a difference. You know, my, it was obvious that I was losing weight. It was obvious that my muscles were becoming more defined and it just sort of spurred me on and gave me that more, more motivation to keep going. And this is what I use now to basically track my progress. You know, the scale, I still do that, but it's kind of the last sort of point of check really. And sort of point five that I want to, really discuss really, um, it's something that I learned really on, you know, after my diet is that you've just got to be patient with this kind of thing. You, it takes time, it really does take time. I was under the impression when I started dieting um, that it wouldn't take me as long as it did to, 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 to lose the body fat that I lost. Making sure that you sort of set in realistic milestones. Um, I think it's for somebody, um, to sort of say, I want to get down to a certain body fat percentage from dieting. I personally think that's a little bit unrealistic because it depends on how much body fat that person's holding. I started dieting on the 11th of November uh, and I was ending my diet on the 11th of February. Um, and my decision at that time was, if I wasn't happy with what I saw after this, um, is that I would sort of up my calories to maintenance level to take a break, um, let's say two or three weeks break and then sort of return to dieting again and sort of set another milestone, maybe one month or two months more. So if you're a skinny fat guy and you're looking to lose weight before you build muscle, my advice would be to set realistic milestones, you know, whether that be a, a time period or, or, or a weight target and just be patient because, you know, this, this, this takes a long time, it's a long journey. So those were five tips really that, um, I wanted to share with you that sort of helped me sort of stay on track, helped me lose weight um, when I was dieting. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to be sort of sharing other things on this channel. Um, as I mentioned to you, I'm using this channel to to document my fitness progress. Um, so anything that's kind of working for me, I'll, I'll, I'll put on this channel. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video in any way, and um, you're interested to see how I get on, feel free to like this video, subscribe to the channel, appreciate that. Um, and I'll see you on the next video.